What is unemployment and why should I care? Well, on the face of it, it might seem like a simple concept. The lower the unemployment, the better for the economy, right? Well, not exactly. Governments do tend to like having low unemployment as they pay out less unemployment benefits, receive higher income taxes and benefit from more demand and therefore economic growth in the economy. In fact, investors like low unemployment too, as they see it as a sign of a healthy economy with sufficient domestic demand to support economic growth. However, low unemployment isn't always beneficial to the economy. Firstly, there is an issue of terminology. The unemployment rate only accounts for people searching for jobs and not those who are outside of the workforce. This could be for good reasons, for example, study or raising children, or for necessary reasons like long-term disability. However, people might choose to exit the workforce for more concerning reasons. For example, people who decide that the deal they get by being unemployed is better than the deal they get by being a low-skilled, low-paid worker. This is called the poverty trap. Now, terminology is important, as a country can have very low unemployment, but also very low employment, which results in a decrease in productive capacity and therefore a decrease in economic growth. Far from being a good thing, low levels of unemployment might actually harm an economy. When unemployment is low, companies struggle to fill vacancies, resulting in lower economic output. And a tight labour market is also inflationary, as low unemployment forces companies to increase wages as they compete for a limited wage pool. This is called a wage price spiral. Now, economists love making lists, and they have come up with a wide range of different types of unemployment. Some, like frictional unemployment, are actually a sign of a healthy economy. Others, like cyclical and seasonal unemployment, are part of a normal business cycle. Others, like structural and regional unemployment, are more serious and suggest longer-term issues in a country's economy. Finally, markets tend to react on the release of new employment and unemployment data. One of the most hotly anticipated and traded data releases are US non-farm payrolls, coming out on the first Friday of every month. Non-farm payrolls survey about 80% of the workforce, excluding all agriculture, government, private household and charity workers. Now, the markets want to know the month-on-month -month change in non-farm payrolls. In a tight labour market, if non-farm payrolls are higher than expected, you might expect to see equities move lower and the dollar strengthen on the expectation that interest rates might rise to curb the inflationary pressures of low unemployment.